commercials where they sweat Gatorade, except it's just sewage seeping. <laughs> Welcome to the Trenches, Pilgrim. This is the Lore Boys, the internet's number one fake history podcast. I'm your host, Ethan Palmer. And this week, we'll be wading into a centuries-old war as we discuss the upcoming tabletop war game, Trench Crusade. Uh, with me, as always, is James and Peter. Say hi, James and Peter. Hello. I'm Hello. on a trench trench coat crusade, uh, which is where I wear a trench coat and I show uh, consensual adults my penis and balls. Uh huh. Cool. What? How do you get that consent? Uh, I have a long form. I have a waiver, <laughs> yeah. have, which is also like what a... I call my penis and balls once they're out. <laughs> right, right. A long just, waiver. You just have like a yeah. a eula tattooed on your chest, and it's just like instead of a signature, it's just you say, and it's like you've, you've consented. <laughs> I ought to consent. Yep. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, my name's Pete, and my feet have been wet for forty five days, and the skin is tender. So that's yeah. my experience in the trenches. Yeah, pretty brutal. Uh, I, thanks so much for listening, everybody. Uh, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash the lore boys. If you want to get a shout out and support the show, uh, you can check it out there. Pete, do we have a couple patrons this week to thank? Yeah, big shout out and thank you to John McEnroe and Grim Gears. Uh, John McEnroe, I think might be a resub. I recognize your name, but hello and welcome back if that's true. And then welcome to Grim Gears. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. We tend to reinvest it, uh, back in to improve things. Uh, as often as we can we do our best mm -hmm. uh yeah and i mean this this week's request comes from uh a patron from longtime patron uh one of the longest running supporters of the show mr elevator the king of ohio the sauce boss himself yeah uh, <laughs> he was our first like, he is our longest running patron it's pretty yeah. crazy man yep. uh honorable mention goes to meme mccree who also requested this and little foot big ass for post posting a uh just a piece of art in one of the art channels recently uh, reminding me that this exists and was requested at, uh, ages ago. At this point. Which is an excellent name. <laughs> Little foot, yeah. big ass. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's an S tier name right there. One of my uh, favorite, he, his DC tier name, S, favorite S tier discorder. Yeah. S, -tier, S tier community member, we'll say. One of my favorite pictures on the internet for a long time was that picture of Littlefoot with like a 180 degree open mouth and it just said motherfucking tree stars, bitch. And I always, <laughs> it always used to make me laugh because I think I've seen Double digit amounts of Land Before Time films, dude. You, you know, I was like, Honey Boy, great name. He was in my stream. He's like, just cracked a PBR, putting together a new Lego set. I was like, Hell yeah, Honey Boy, that's Hell life, man. That's the dream. That's the dream. We're we're all stuck in the rat race trying to get there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Not that our so, life right now is very hard. I just cracked a tall Grolsch and I'm podcasting <laughs> with the boys. So it's just like, damn, dude, I wish I had his life <laughs> as yeah. if I'm struggling. <laughs> Uh, so I'm I'm gonna guess that Trans Crusade doesn't ring any bells for you guys. Like I said, Saucy requested it in the lore request channel on the Discord, discord.gg slash loreboys ages ago. Uh was was backed up one other time. And Littlefoot Big Ass has posted, as far as I know, one piece of art about it. But extremely cool art style. Um it's the art style, uh, all the art is done by uh, a freelance artist by the name of um Mike Franchina. Who's he's worked on uh, Diablo Four. He's worked on uh, Path of Exile Two. Uh, he's worked on a, a ton of other Blizzard games uh, as well. Has a very uh, unique and I th I think really um, like grabby grabby uh, sort of art style that really like pulls your eyes and you're like oh damn. Uh, and then it was I, the game design was by uh, someone named Thomas Pirinen, uh, who uh, I don't know the game so much. So the game itself is a um, tabletop war game like warhammer where it's it's you know you get your little models and you build your armies and then you you have them fight each other essentially a lot of teeth in this one though uh, teeth where there shouldn't be teeth from what i just saw on the the art channel on the discord yeah yeah so it's all it's all art like that and i'll have plenty of pictures like that to, to share with you guys cool so trench crusade asks the question what if world war one started in the year 1099 after a gate to hell was opened and then never ended essentially huh. so okay. present present day quote unquote present day in uh trench crusade is 1914 so it's kind of the 
middle of the war. I believe the war the war started in 1914 or 1912. <laughs> it, it was 14 when to 18. A, yeah. After yeah. the Titanic, before Hitler. There That's, you go. You're the right. When a, devil, I can remember. When, a, when a devil threw a pitchfork through Franz Ferdinand. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our, our student Franz Ferdinand getting getting uh, assassinated by Poseidon rearing out of the ocean with a, a trident yeah, or uh, yeah, yeah I was thinking of just like a demon coming out of a sandwich shop because the Franz Ferdinand <laughs> had taken like a wrong turn he's just like uh, oh fuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, drops the baby he's been eating just like goes outside with a pitchfork <laughs> to kill him <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll start you guys off with a, a quote uh, listed in the lore primer. So the main source for 99% of this episode is from the lore primer, uh, which is just a, a standalone PDF, which gives you some of the lore and some of the descriptions of, of people. During the first crusade, the armies of the church captured the holy city. Under the most holy of temples, the Knights Templar discovered secret vaults and within them an ancient demonic artifact. The Templars, blinded by greed and with weakness in their hearts, fell to their knees. They had found a new lord. Seeing the unholy wisdom of which the artifact spoke, they began trafficking with devils and committing all manner of unspeakable rites. This was the first heresy. The armies of the church retreated into Jerusalem, uh, retreated and Jerusalem became a depraved pit where hell and our mortal plane now bled into one. For eight centuries, the church has waged its crusade to take back the holy city. The landscape has been utterly devastated, crisscrossed with thousands of miles of mud, trenches, and craters. The, the crusade is now waged with armies wielding terrifying weaponry, and both sides conjure up supernatural beings of such immense power they are nigh unstoppable. Even with such incalculable might, the armies are at a stalemate. This is the Trench Crusade. Oh my god. Oh. Imagine shooting at, like, a ten-foot-tall demon that's, like, lumbering towards you from across the trench, and you got your M1 Garand just... Bing! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight up, straight up. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The bolt, it's all it's all bolt action rifles. So, um, tabletop war games set in grimdark alternate or alternate Earth at the time of World War One. The aesthetic is very much what would World War One have looked like if it had been raging for eight hundred years. And there was also magic and demons and angels and even more Catholicism. Basically, Jesus. there'd be no uh, people left after eight hundred years. I feel like. Jesus. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, definitely not. Eight hundred years of is it of still constant. contained, uh, like within within the within the Holy Land? Because we'll we'll or, get there. Okay. We'll, we'll go through everything. To start, it is just it is out of Jerusalem essentially, and it is okay. it is all all based out of Jerusalem. Uh, but it won't be forever. It will spread. Uh, so I mentioned all the lore for this comes from the lore primer. It's a, a official material from uh, Thomas Piernan. Uh, however. He has made it clear in their Discord server that uh, it is written by an in-fiction historian. So it has in-fiction biases, like this this historical text is written from the perspective of a fallible person within the universe, right? Oh, so, right. It's like House of the Dragon. That's neat. Exactly, sure. yeah. The, the, I, I don't know uh, anything about that. We've never done an episode on it. so how, No, we haven't. <laughs> the historians uh, always write the, the history, right? And I guess it's yeah, in the world. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So maybe the devils are actually the good guys and this guy's just up his own. I was ass, just about to know? say, what side is he on? Is he on the yeah. side of the Crusaders or on the or the Hellspawn? He's uh, on the side of the, the Crusaders, on the side of the church, if you will. I'm pretty sure Greece never actually happened. All those like philosophers and stuff just made it up. But Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, you couldn't. <laughs> You couldn't drag race two cars in the LA River like that. It wouldn't nope. work. Okay, it's a river. Yep. It's full of water. Yeah. So, so, okay. yeah. Grease lightning down a quarter yeah. mile. Yeah, right. Dude. Yeah, History right, is dude. written by the victors, so they just wrote a musical about teenagers. <laughs> 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 pay, my, pay no attention to the atrocities committed. Uh, I, every from Greece, there's a commercial where someone there's a little beaver who brushes his teeth and goes brush up, brush up, brush up. And every time I brush my teeth in my head, I think brush up, brush up, brush up. So Greece has changed my life forever. But, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, to your point, Peter, and we'll, we'll get into like how the war kind of spreads through some of the world. I like there is a map online which I actually wanted to grab for you guys, but uh, didn't. I'm just saying both world wars have been. Um, can been outside of North America, meaning they're not my problem because it's the only continent I recognize as real, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we kick so their like, asses. History written by the victors. The only continent is North America. That's it. I mean, history is obviously like very different in that there wasn't much, nearly as much settling of the Americas because you know they were kind of dealing with 
uh, this pressure at their backs. And there have been like new hell gates, which have kind of opened up around the world. So in like West Africa, in, in part of the Amazon, uh, the, the Comanches end up siding with, with hell at some point on uh, Mars it's, with it seems like, guy. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I guess if it's, it's just like, if the church is currently de- dealing with like demons pouring out of the Levant, it's just like some guy comes up. He's just like, I need, Five million pesetas to prove the Earth is round. It's like Magellan. We don't care. Okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, a lot of that stuff is so. This is like uh, in beta, I believe the 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 game as it is. So it's not fully released yet. It's not fully published. Uh, I suppose there are some like uh, beta playtest rules that you can play with. Um, I don't know if there's a Kickstarter. Maybe there is. Look it up for yourself. Um, but it seems like maybe they'll develop more of the lore. I mean, there's no way they're going to have like every single, you know, ethnic group or civilization covered in whatever they end up uh, publishing eventually because there's too many people. But um, it focuses mainly on uh, much of the action is around the Holy City, Jerusalem, especially what we're going to talk about today. It's it's pretty much all centered around the Holy City, Jerusalem. We'll talk a little like very, very uh, snippets about mainland Europe. Um, or I guess we, we could say uh, what's left of the Holy City, Jerusalem, Jerusalem uh tens of thousand kilometers of no man's land stretch in, in all directions around it interspersed with trenches carved into mud spreading out from this this ground zero okay so the start of our timeline from that quote 1099 matches up very nicely with the uh real world first crusade so the first of the crusades uh started in 1095 uh, it was a series of religious wars which would ultimately culminate in the siege of Jerusalem. Jerusalem being a holy city in uh, a holy city for Christianity, and I believe uh, the Jews uh, in Israel, right? Uh, and was fought over for uh, probably close to two thousand years. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say from then to present. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Wow. Um, the in 1099 was the siege of Jerusalem. Uh, and Christian forces would overtake the seated Islamic rulers at the edge of the Levant. Two years later, uh, in the oh, just a random fun fact: they had the quote has the first Templar, the Templars being the ones who were corrupted by uh, this artifact in the basement of Jerusalem in 1099. Fun fact: the Templars weren't the ones on the first Crusade. They they only formed about 20 years later or something like that. Oh, 20, oh really? 25, I, yeah, 25 years later. We've definitely first, had to have talked about them. Because of the Assassin's Creed coverage. Assassin's Creed, yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, so they, they're the bad guys in this fiction, too, because they're the ones who sold sold out to hell and opened a, a portal in Jerusalem and destroyed Oh, we most recently talked about them in um, Deus Ex because they eventually disband and form the Illuminati to... Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I mean, you can't control the banks with the Illuminati if you're fighting demons, so I'm sure the banks are much more ethical in this universe, right? That's <laughs> yeah, voice canon. Truly, really, truly. Really, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, Two years later, in the year 1101, the year of three battles takes place uh, when heretics reinforced by the armies of the Third Circle of Hell went on their own crusade and conquered most of the of the Levant. So uh, most of uh, Jordan, Syria, uh, Israel and Lebanon uh, are conquered by the forces of hell. And so like they're they're sort of slowly spreading out. This is two years after the portal opened. Uh, So making some moves. These You'll are the remember- gluttony fellas. I couldn't yeah, I was remember just gonna say, yeah. what You'll order they went in, so the, the gluttony army came out. Yeah, the the you'll remember from our Dante episode, if you haven't heard it, you can go back and listen to it. Uh, the third circle was an icy plain where gluttons were punished. Yes. Uh, in 1102, the ancient city of Antioch is fortified and becomes the focal po- point of resistance against the forces of hell. Uh, so Antioch is sort of in a uh, southern uh, spear of Turkey. Uh, in modern day Turkey anyway, which borders near Syria. So it's kind of north of Jer- pretty far north of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, but still in the Levant or, or kind of right up against the Levant. Uh, Antioch is uh, was the capital of the Principality of Antioch, which was one of four crusader states which existed in the Levant. I'll send you guys a picture of Antioch, California, which guaranteed worse than whatever's going on here. <laughs> Uh, I sent you guys a picture. You can see the, I mean, the kingdom of Jerusalem at the bottom is, these are four crusader states from real world history. Uh, okay. The principality of, of Antioch, you see there, you see where Antioch is in, in relation to Jerusalem. Antioch kind of becomes this bastion almost surrounded on all sides by the forces of hell uh, in Trench Crusade. And that'll, that'll only get worse for them. Uh, Antioch will uh, become the eventual capital of our in-fiction faction, 
cleverly named the Principality of New Antioch. We'll get we'll get we'll get to what happened to Antioch and why they had to rename it New Antioch (laughs) a little bit later. How many massacres until you need to rename your city New Blank? Is Uh, my that's I'm guessing at least just just one or just 800 years of unending massacre. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which is (laughs) is more damning. Uh, A few years later, in 1109, we have the formation of the beautifully named Pure Chef's Kiss. No notes. Great Sultanate of the invincible iron wall of the two horns that pierce the sky. Just Very like cool. if you're going to make a faction, that's a great name for a faction. Um, over the, over the next few decades, this Sultanate would unify the Islamic factions in the region. So we will have the principality of, of new Antioch, who is kind of the uh, leading Catholic and Christian forces against the forces of hell and the devil. Uh, this is like, Hey, the, the Muslims are also fighting uh, against hell, obviously. Uh, and they, they kind of fight under this banner. Uh, the banner of the great sultanate cool it's suleiman uh, is or one of the suleimans is he still in this is was he because i think he fought again he defeated like multiple waves of crusaders did he not uh it's not uh it's not him who's the uh, i don't know if i actually wrote down the name of the uh i can pull up the clip on uh the the, the real dude yeah i don't think I don't think I have, I have the name of the real sultan, but it's the sultan of rum. So if that was, if that was Saladin name. was the guy I was thinking of. Okay. My bad. There you go. So just to kind of tie this together for me, the, the two horns that pierce the sky faction. Do we mm-hmm. know where they are geographically? Are they in New yeah. Antioch? Or? Uh, so yeah, they're, they're kind of, uh, they, they go further east, right? So um, they're, they're essentially... It's it's essentially the the Middle East was kind of split down the middle by these Crusader states, and the, then like there was Persia all to the east, right? So it's it's Persia, like Iran, Iraq, all that was Persia. Okay, right. So that's these guys is, unite all the Islamic factions. They are they are that they are actually going to be like much more contained than that, which we'll we'll get to in a little second. But they're much like New Antioch, kind of on the front lines here. They're going to operate out of a single city, pretty much. Uh, okay. okay. Um, yeah. So it's said in Trench Crusade. That it was during this time that the Iron Wall of Iskander reemerges and is fortified against the heretics pouring out of Jerusalem. Uh, I sent a picture to you guys, which uh, depicts the Iron Wall of Iskander. Uh, I had to look it up because uh, it really stood out to me, obviously. But the Iron Wall of Iskander is probably a reference to the Gates of Alexander, uh, also known okay. as the, also known as the Caspian Gates. Uh, the gates are a mountain pass in the Eastern Caucasus Mountains, which would have separated the Greco-Roman world from the Persian world. So to answer yeah, your it's question, like Jamie, Uzbekistan or something, right? Uh, it's not known for sure. Um, it's popularly thought, and I have a picture for you guys, that the gates of Alexander are uh, the uh, fortifications of Derbent. I said you guys a picture of it. It's just a picture of a castle on a hill, basically. But okay. essentially... Jamie, there was this. Uh, there was these two mountains. There was a pass between them, and uh, Alexander the Great at some point went there, fortified that location as a way to keep out the Persian hordes or the Persian okay. armies, I should say. Um, Pliny the Elder, fun fact, wrote uh, that the iron wrote that iron covered beams were placed above a horribly odorous river, along with a fortress to bar the passage of innumerable tribes. When describing uh, the gates of Alexander. I'm not going to go over the stinky river on the stinky, beams. Stinky river, <laughs> iron beams. No, uh, thank you. I'm old. I'm, gonna say I'm old. too old to cross the, this stinky river. The Persians <laughs> turn back at the stinky river. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make our river stink so much. The Persians won't want to come here. They've got like souvenir. <laughs> they've got like souvenir to souvenir t-shirts. It's just like, I lost the crusade. at stinky river. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a river of cologne and guys <laughs> saying, bro, <laughs> it's just axe body spray yeah. like pouring straight out of hell <laughs> yeah. I, w- I went on crusade and all I got was a swim in the stinky river it's, well, uh, it's like the, the current Paris Olympics where the river in Paris poisoned multiple triathletes because yeah. the sewage and had poured into it <laughs> the most beautiful thing is that everybody knew that they were going to get poisoned everybody knew that this was going to poison people and they were like well we're still going to do it you yeah, will get Olympian. sepsis if you have a paper cut in that kind of water, dude. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, I think it was cool because I think if you're an Olympian, you should be better than the average human. And I think you should be able to swim through sewage and perform well. Honestly, I mean, a lot of problems with the IOC, but a lot of the competitors also said that they wanted to swim in the end. So what can you do? Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. It's there's sewage in it. They're just like, yeah, but I want that gold medal. And I saw the picture of the Canadian guy who got out and just like projectile vomited a stream of probably just Gatorade and sewage and swallowed by accident. <laughs> it's so bad. This is a horrible. That guy uh, went through the stinky river and all he got was a bronze medal. Yeah, those old Gatorade <laughs> commercials where they sweat Gatorade, except it's just sewage seeping. Yeah, <laughs> Michael yeah, Jordan's dude. beads of sewage on his forehead. <laughs> yeah. Little, beads, little beads of poop all over him. Yeah, yeah, yeah little <laughs> bits of toilet paper. Co- so. Covered in poop emojis. Uh, oh, yeah. Notably, for our Trench Crusade story, we're going to keep talking a little bit about real-world history because I thought this was all very interesting, uh, is a tale from the first-century Jewish historian Josephus who states that the gates of Alexander were designed to be a barrier against the Scythians. Uh, the Scythians were known among the Jews as Magogites, or meaning descendants of Magog. So uh, the Jewish people of, of the day, in, of the first century, uh, had this, this where the Scythians are from, uh, Scythia, they called it Magog, and their descendants were Magogites. From the Bible, from uh, some rabbinic texts, uh, from some other stories of the day, we know that from the lands of Magog would one day wander someone known as Gog. Uh, so this was Gog from Magog. That is would eventually like, is that like God from Team You? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, my, uh, yeah, I'm Gog. Wish, Wish.com's uh, God. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is Gilas. Thank <laughs> God, damn it! Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Gog from Magog would eventually be transliterated to uh, Gog and Magog. So this one person, this one Scythian, became two Scythians. Just how storytelling works. Uh, and they were two in the Christian Bible. There were stories of them in the Christian Bible. In Christianity, specifically over the years, Gog and Magog are depicted as starkly apocalyptic allies of Satan. The Scythians were often painted as sort of these like Urdu hordes off in the distance, like these, these, you know, monk, these hordes, which would come and like destroy Christianity and civilization from time to time. Right. Uh, so Gog and Magog are sp- starkly apocalyptic allies of Satan against God in the book of revelation. So I got again. a big fucking territory. I'm, I'm pulling up the clip right now and the Scythians cover like yep. they border, they border like, Parthia, uh, the Roman Empire, Persia, and the Ur- Uralic tribes, like in the there Urals, like yeah. uh, which Urals. I guess would border Ukraine and Russia, like that yeah. section right there. Yeah, I wonder so. if there's anything like with uh, like Jedi and Sith and like Jerusalem and Scythian. Like, uh, maybe. I mean, George Lucas. The Judai. Wait, I mean, we. <laughs> <laughs> What you like fucking what you like go to the park to play chess with and like ask questions from Yoda who's just like an old like New York rabbi is giving, <laughs> giving you backwards advice in Central Park. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The locks you must try. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, funny. Uh, I was thinking because I now that I have a new PC, I have a list of games I want to replay on it. And I installed and I haven't started because I'm into something else, but um I want to replay Metro Metro Exodus. Exodus, of course, being in the Bible. You do this tr- this journey in reverse. You leave Russia and you go through the Urals, through the Caspian Sea, out towards the uh, Pacific Ocean in the other direction, which I think is pretty interesting. No mm-hmm. idea what they were thinking, if they were thinking this when they wrote it, but it's funny to see, like, the... Just, like, watching the way the Scythians came in in that direction, like, into the Holy Land, leaving in the opposite direction in something I, called Exodus. I mean, I'm sure the Scythians were like border wars on every front right like everybody was at the time it's just the scythians yeah. on the border with the holy land little little vaunt would would be you know the ones we talked about here yeah. um so they're starkly apocalyptic allies uh now that we have a little bit of that real history here's a quote from our source book when the infidels opened the thrice cursed j ja- jeez i'm gonna take another run at that one when the infidels opened the thrice cursed gate to jahannam releasing the Gog and Magog upon those who believe, it seemed that all was lost and Shaitan would emerge victorious over Dunya. But the creator of the universe came to the aid of the faithful, and as had been written, the great iron wall of Du al Karnain manifested itself on the lands ruled by the Sultan Rum. A lot of words there. A lot of mispronounced words there. <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> I can translate for you guys. Jahannam is uh, hell in, in Islam, essentially. Okay. Uh, Gog and Magog we covered. Shaitan are kind of evil spirits in in the Islamic belief. Dunya is Earth, so uh, it seemed that all was lost, and Shaitan would emerge over victorious over Dunya. That evil spirits would consume the Earth. 
but the creator of the universe, God, came down to aid the faithful. Uh, the great iron wall of Du Al Karnain. I looked it up. Du Al Karnain is just uh, an Islamic name for Alexander. So, uh, oh, God, okay, him- cool. God himself comes down. There's this this fort from uh, real world history, uh, the gates of Alexander, believed to have existed. We we think it's this Fort Derbin, but we don't really know. Um, in the fiction that was destroyed at some point, God comes down. R- builds it back up himself uh and and makes it out of iron essentially cool. they will this is where they will build their city this is where these the sultanate uh operates out of and will kind of remain uh this whole time behind these uh walls made of iron essentially which hell cannot cannot pierce do they have a weakness well, to iron like fairies is that during no. the lead okay okay no it's just i mean more than anything i think it's just like they want to set up the factions and like hell for what it's worth doesn't seem particularly organized there is uh like there's a lot of devils in hell right there's the um i remember the name of that book uh that you kind of wanted to cover is inferno no No, the 12 keys of solomon yeah that that one where it just has just has like 30 different devils with uh, president amy i remember her yeah exactly (laughs) um there there so in that book like there's there's names from that book which you see like pop up Maghreb is one of them who's like not described at all in any way on the wikipedia page at least but he's listed as one of the the big devils in that book. Okay. So, uh, and there's a ton of infighting amongst devils, of course, right? Like yeah. they're they're all kind of playing their own game and, and vying for their own thing. So they don't seem to be making like tons of headway in that regard. They're uh, lawful evil usually in Dungeons in, in Dungeons and Dragons. They are devils are lawful evil. Demons are chaotic evil. Right. So you can you can usually reason with a devil in D anD D, whereas a, a demon you you normally can't. Um. But I mean, the forces of good also straight up have God on their side, right? Like God literally reached down a hand and pulled up these iron gates. So why can't they overcome them? Probably because God made the walls, right? I think they have an anime too in 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 this alternate history. Oh, you don't want to fuck with the Sultan? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. Uh, did you say anime? I think yeah, anime was, <laughs> was invented after the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, I think that's oh, what did it, okay. right? It was yeah. the right, radiation. Right. Yeah, because we saw that whole thing with hentai being popular in places with more radiation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. The U.S. government really is responsible for all the evils currently on Earth, aren't they? <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. well, no, but US, the God and anime US kid is very funny, where he's got the gates of Alexander on his side with the broomstick or whatever, <laughs> just to beat him as bullies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Over the decades, after the wall rose, many pilgrims would die along the road trying to answer the call of the faithful as the heretics preyed upon the long roads to the gates. Once enough pilgrims had arrived, the gates were shut, and hell's siege of those gates has never ceased since uh, to this day. So for 800 years, the there's just been a siege on this city. Uh, don't ask me where they get their food. I assume it's manna from God. Cool. Here's just a, a fun little piece of art for you guys. This is a, a Janissary of the Sultanate. Uh, just just for aesthetic, essentially. Very cool. Looks exactly like a regular Janissary, but he's clearly got a gas mask built into his scary ass mustache helmet. And that's yeah. fucking awesome. Exactly. Which I mean, they would have, right? Like the Ottomans were heavily involved in World War One. I. I don't know how accurate like that is, but I assume I assume they had like some sort of gas protection in World War One if they were running around with their Janissary masks. But were they using gas on that front? Because I've seen most of Lords oh, of know. Arabia and I don't remember a gas scene in that one. A lot more camels. Sure, yeah. The historic the historic the documentary, documentary made in the sixties, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't speaking tr- of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't trust an actual documentary made in the sixties. You know what I mean? They just yeah. they, they threw lemmings to their death in the, in that day. Like, to to make yeah, up a story yeah. about them jumping off cliffs. Oh dude, there's that whole scene where they're like eating a hot dog and they put the mustard on the hot dog, but a little bit of the mustard fell onto the burner and then it turned <laughs> into a gas and he's like <clears throat> Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Eureka. <laughs> he jumped out of his bathtub, ran through the streets yelling Eureka. Yeah, yeah. You know, running with naked with their hot yeah. dog. Yeah, exactly. Was yeah. it uh, Gal- Galileo in a bathtub full of mustard? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he invented sarin gas. That's why the church was so mad at him, right? I had a thought today because I was cooking a pork tenderloin and I had like um, a liquid in the bottom that like mustard had seeped into. And I was like, I wonder what the boiling point of mustard is because this should be higher than a hundred degrees and the water's not boiling. And what's the boiling point of mustard? 
You know what I mean? And then I was like, yeah. wait, I should not boil mustard. Oh, <laughs> then that's no gas. Then you have mustard yeah, gas. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Smart. Smart. Yeah. So careful when you're cooking your pork roast, guys, not the mustard <laughs> gas, your, your whole family. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just a bunch of like hams falling into trenches just spraying yeah. up mustard gas <laughs> guys struggling to get gas masks on yeah. and then also bibs to eat the ham yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah the, instead the, of the piss rag <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a quote for you guys to just there's going to be a lot more words which you won't understand I'll I'll explain them after so don't get hung up on them I speak Farsi That's fair. I always forget about that about you the Iron Wall is the greatest defensive work in the world, a mighty bulwark festooned with the famed artillery of the Sultan. A Zeb sharps- sharpshooter stand at ready, ever watchful for surprise attacks, and the elite Janissary regiments have barracks at set intervals near the wall so they can react at- to an- any attack at speed. During a more serious incursion, a full muster of Azebs is called. The-, the House of Wisdom unleashes its terrifying Taquin creations upon the foe. And if the need is desperate, the Sultan himself comes forth and his Janissaries march with him to do battle, carrying the green flag of the Prophet with them. So, as a it, just foot, irregular foot soldiers, essentially. Cool. Is this Janiss- the same? Are they based out of Baghdad? Because I think that's where the OG real world House of Wisdom was, right? Like in Iraq? Is that in Iraq? Yeah. Uh, I think Baghdad is in, is in Iraq. Or boy, we're really showing our ass on this one. It must be. It must be Iraq. I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not Afghanistan. I don't think. So it must. No, be that's Kabul. And Kabul is. I think the capital there. And then it, Tehran is Iran. And then taking, I'm just taking shots out here, Peter. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm right about <laughs> okay. well, at least okay. where Kabul is in Afghanistan. I don't know if it's the capital, yeah. but Tehran is Tehran. the capital of Iran. I, Tehran I don't, is, is Iran for sure. Yeah. I don't know. It's not confirmed. It's at the gates of of Alexander, so probably not. They it's pro- they probably just like took the House of Wisdom that you know from Baghdad, and if it is actually from Baghdad, I I didn't look this up, uh, but and it's in it's at the gates of Alexander now, which is where like the city, the city. There's one city, and it's that city. Uh, yeah. There will be a, a fort, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But okay, white boys, I'm checking for it. Hang on. <laughs> so one deal, one detail from that quote I, that you I said saw rock. Was, we were right. All right, cool. <laughs> okay. uh, one detail that I thought was really cool was the mention of the terrifying Taquin creations. Uh, so from Wikipedia, quote, Taquin was a goal of certain Muslim alchemists, notably Jabir ibn Hayyan. In the alchemical context, Taquin refers to the creation of synthetic life in the laboratory up to and including human life. So I think golems, homunculuses, things like cool. that. Uh, I sent you guys a picture of a, a uh, what are they called? Jabirian alchemist and their Taquin. So uh, I'll give you guys a. I'll give Pete a run at, at describing the Taquin, the little the little homunculus man he's got with him. He's going along. Um, <laughs> he he's got like what? It, probably some sort of like like it's, I guess they're using like Greek fire or something because the alchemist is holding like a fire grenade or like a fire yeah. potion. Um, yeah. So the Taquin, his face is pretty uneven, like a bald, hunched over purple man with a grafted in like fire extinguisher basically with the tank on his back and then some sort of like rune like a pentagram but i think it's got seven sides eight. there it's eight. got eight uh, wait one octogram two, three, and then four, a bunch five, of like seven, eight, yeah not like like unhealed like jackson from more pipes basically throughout his body yeah. so he's 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 coming along he's he's standing up on his own two feet but he's hunched over at like waist height of the yeah. actual alchemist Hunched over and, and weeping blood, but otherwise doing all right. Also weeping, weeping and drooling blood, and no real nose either. Just just no. nostrils in the face. Yeah, yeah, weak chin. Um, weak chin. This guy. Although the alchemist does have the third eye in the like silver woman's mask that they're wearing, which is fucking awesome. Yeah. So so I mean, Jabir Ibn Hayyan with this real alchemist in in uh, the ancient Muslim world uh, believes that you. could okay wait whether or not he believed it i got a a little bit down a rabbit hole i didn't write this down so this is i'm reciting my wikipedia research for you guys we are recording both the documentary um (laughs) yeah lawrence of arabia and then wikipedia (laughs) to back it up (laughs) he uh he had this like all this stuff is from this book like all this this history is from this book that he had his journal that he had but a lot of historians know that he was like he was a real prankster and they think that like it's written in a way that only people who knew him would knew would know which entries in his journal to take seriously and which ones not to take seriously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so whether or not he believed that uh, alchemical life could actually be created, what is like still up for debate. Most people are like, ah, eh, probably not. But uh, some people 
are like, no, he wrote it in his diary. It's it's probably real, right? That's funny. funny yeah. <laughs> this uh, thing actually reminds me of the uh, the weird uh, frog guys from Elden Ring, the artificial little frog dudes that are like created uh, in uh, whatever Albinorax. it's called. Albinorax. Yeah, Albinorax. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I posted another one. This thing's called a Lion of Jabir. Uh, this one's a little bit more intimidating than the last one. Jesus uh, Christ! So kind of kind of tells you that they, like, they've they have perfected the art of creating these tack wins. And again, they they will release these over the walls during uh, particularly brutal attacks from hell. We got we got our own hell beast, you know. Yeah, I was gonna say this thing looks mm-hmm. like it's right at home in hell. I also like to go on, to carry on with like the the Janissary style of a lot of these yeah. armies it also has a sculpted in mustache on its face yeah. ju- just in case you were wondering but it and is it, also just like a giant meaty gorilla with sharp cl- it looks like a hairless bear with a viking's face on it basically <laughs> yeah it, it suits him it suits him he's got a couple it's very cool in case they in case he wants to you know start a jam sesh got a nice it symbol looks on like, his back a zildjian yeah, it, I, it re- it looks like he fell asleep in the armory, and I don't know if you've ever fallen asleep with like change in your bed, but like you wake okay, up and it's stuck like to stuck to your back. Yeah, yeah. It looks like yeah. he fell asleep in an armory, and there's just like shields stuck to random yeah, yeah. parts of his naked body. And, yeah. and instead of uh, you know the the guards in the armory, instead of drawing on him in sharpie, they carved stuff into his skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the Islamic symbol for penis that he's got uh, uh, carved into his hand there. <laughs> Dude, it happened this week where uh, I was going to bed and I was like so hungry. I'm watching a show in bed. So I was like, what can I eat that I won't feel that bad about in the morning? I'm like, okay, I'll have a little protein bar. So I ate a protein bar. But when I woke up in the morning, I got up and just the wrapper of the protein bar was just stuck <laughs> to the side of me as I was walking to the bathroom. It was like, ah. <laughs> Jamie, like, Jamie, like a bear rubbing up against his walls, like, arr, 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 <laughs> yeah, trying, exactly. trying to scratch the wrapper off, off of the back uh, yeah. of his page. I had my um, AirPods stuck to me uh, Sunday morning. I fell asleep with listening to music, and then yeah, they were they were I was they were stuck to where basically where my kidneys were. So I was <laughs> just like you know <laughs> playing Mozart so I could pee better. <laughs> uh, you guys fall asleep, fall asleep with stuff in your in your bed. That's crazy. Uh, okay, back to the timeline. That was a nice little diversion. I thought the Sultanate was cool. We'll talk a little bit at the end about the forces of hell, and we'll do the same with the forces of hell and the forces of Christianity at the end. Um, but the timeline, eight years after the formation of the Sultanate, when the, the walls rose up, we have the legendary 17 martyrs, okay? A group of 17 who traveled to the Hellgate at Jerusalem to try and convince the non-believers with words instead of swords. They were captured, tortured, and have been kept in a perpetual state of agony in the white hot brazen bulls for the last 800 years. <laughs> oh my God. Sucks to suck, guys. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, we tried to talk to hell about it, and uh, they didn't listen. They were unreceptive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, vortex yeah. of blood that came to greet me at the gate didn't really understand what I was saying to it at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh. In 1165, the legendary Hassan Isaba also known as the Old Man in the Mountain, defends the Fortress of Alamut with his legendary Hashashins. Um, oh, okay, cool. Sabah was a real man uh, and founded the Order of Assassins. Uh, Alamut is a real fortress near Tehran, where Sabah installed his own state, known as Nizari Ismaili, in the real world, uh, I should say. He, he does this in... I thought the river is smelly. <laughs> no, Nizari <laughs> Ismaili. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, fun fact about his nickname, the old man in the mountain, uh, it was given to Sabah by none other than Marco Polo, uh, and, oh, would cool. co- and would come to be the unofficial Western title for the leader of the assassins until, until their order pretty much stopped being a thing. Speaking of other guys who wrote down a bunch of bullshit that his friends can discern from fiction, Marco Polo, other yeah. silver, silver metal guy making <laughs> shit up. <laughs> straight up, straight up. Yeah. Uh, Asandi Sabah, not, not made up, did form this state. Uh, just outside of Tehran, he basically like took a mountain fortress and said, "I'm making my own country. Screw you guys! I'll make my own country with blackjack and hookers." And, and the mad lad went and did it. Right, uh, my solemn, dignified fortress with no blackjack or hookers. Actually, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, a quote from Wikipedia just on Alamut. Uh, Alamut was thought impregnable to any military attack and was fabled for its heavenly gardens, library, and laboratories where philosophers, scientists, and theologians could debate in intellectual freedom. And it's just like, what a nice little slice he set up yeah. for himself, right? Good yeah. job, Hashashans. Uh, in Trench Crusade, Alamut stands to this day. So he did the same thing there. They, the Order of Assassins exists and is going strong in the fight against hell. 
basically. Hell yeah. We'll, we'll take a W. Sounds like uh, Sean Connery saying assassins. Assassins. <laughs> assassins. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you yeah, just he, have he to would assassinate play. a woman. <laughs> 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 he was Indiana Jones' dad. Um, I was reminded of my great character in Cell, Indiana Jones, uh, this week. And uh, oh, of course, yeah, it yeah, was yeah, a good yeah, character. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, and snakes. And women. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You can do it now. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, we have some infighting for the Christians. Uh oh. Uh oh. Again. We have the wars of Triclavianism. Peter, do you know what Triclavianism is? No. Okay. I know what it is. It's when you have at least three Clavians. That's uh, amazingly close. Is uh, it? Is it like? Just, the just tell me what a Clavian thing? is. A huh? Clavian is a key. No. Uh, do you, clavicle. It's do you, a belly button. Do you guys want to guess what the forces of Christianity decided was worth fighting each other over after a hundred years of war with hell? Um. So the wars, the wars raged for nearly a century in the fiction from 1215 to 1306. I'm unable to find, or or maybe these were. No, yeah, they, these weren't. So uh, I'm unable to find more details on, or too many more details on the war in the fiction. But Triclavianism, in the real world at least, is a pseudo heretical belief that Jesus was crucified with three nails, not four. <laughs> so, oh, for my, fuck's sake. <laughs> my, the lore boys canon here is that <laughs> Christians after a century of war with hell, have decided to spend a, a century of war with each other over if, whether it was three nails or four nails. Which so, I like, think, the, they're debating the foot one, whether he was yeah, standing exactly. on, like, it, a triangular it, bracket. Whether it was one nail through both feet or a nail for each foot. Oh. Well, no, it's two in the hands. Yeah, so it's yeah. whether it's three or four is the... Whether it's oh, three nails or four. I see. Yeah. Sorry, I thought, it, I thought it was two or three because I was no. thinking in my head it's two. No, it's three or four, which is what I said, so... Okay, it's on you. So it's on you for this year. It is, yeah. I misunderstood <laughs> that. Yeah, I think... Um, well, I think four would just be... Jeez, has got to squirm a little, huh? Can so you imagine be bayonetting a monster and then just bringing this up to your buddy right, right behind you? <laughs> I'll fucking kill you! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the fuck did you say? <laughs> wow. Oh, Sorry to cut you off there, JV. Wait, which, oh, one, which one was it in real history, though? It, well, they don't know. Like it's it is a matter of debate. I saw some when I say pseudo heretical belief, there was I saw some uh, misinformation on the internet. If you guys can believe it, which I I'm don't. pretty sure, pretty sure is debunked. Where uh, Pope Innocent the Third, it's claimed like an urban legend that Pope Innocent the Third declared Triclavianism, believing that it was three nails, like a heresy. But there's no actual there's no actual proof that that ever why actually does it matter? happened. What is is there a reason why it matters? Oh, buddy. <laughs> I got it a few things Pope to tell you about religion. Third. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. all about belief, man. <laughs> it doesn't. None of it I matters. Think this it's, is probably it doesn't like, change the outcome. Was it, it like? It does. Yeah, because you'd have to have like because relics are so important in Catholicism. If you've got a guy who's just like Pope Innocent, I have the three holy nails that crucified Christ, and somebody is just like, I got the fourth. Those guys are going to war. Uh, like yeah. that's right. Like that's the thing. It's oh, fuck. I believe there was 50 nails and I have the 47 other ones, guys. If anyone wants <laughs> yeah, to buy one. If anyone and, wants to buy one, I got they're, going, they're going like hotcakes. So get just, yours just now. Just at Rona yeah. with boxes of nails on sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From 1346 to 1353, we have the first Black Grail. But more on that after the break. Infused with demonic essence from the bowels of the seventh layer of hell, where the putrid fortress of Beelzebub stands, pu spews forth a torrent of demonic hellflies, scorpions, locusts, and other infernal insects. The hellgate opens, and a veritable tidal wave of foulness emerges, flowing across the land at startling speed, consuming everything and leaving indescribable horror in its wake. After nine days, the insect swarm exhausts itself, devouring its own in its insatiable hunger. The Black Grail is indiscriminate in its hatred of all living things. Its infections can spread to virtually any living biological matter, which bursts forth with tumors, boils, and weeping pustules. Puddles and ponds of melted flesh are left in its wake. Endless mouths left screaming in their agony, for the Black Grail destroys the body but leaves the mind intact to suffer. The scientists, priests of the church and the alchemists of the Sultanate fervently look for a way to inoculate their people against this foulest of diseases, but thus far they are without success. 
The only answer is to burn the infected settlements with specially constructed flamethrower tanks that use holy anointing oil as the fuel for their weapons. But if this is not done, or the countermeasures are too late, what happens next is even worse. Bodies of men, horses, dogs, insects, and other animals of every kind that are infected by the Black Grail lurch to their feet, driven by a demonic will. Not living, not dead, they become vessels to spread the corruption of their master ever further, forming warbands that strive to find and infect life of any kind. They also gather things that mortals value and bring this loot as well as grisly trophies to the feet of the idols of Beelzebub they erect. Thus, the cult of the Black Grail mocks the devotions of the faithful and their prayers. Welcome <laughs> back to the break. So I, no, sir, I said spray the oil on the enemies and baptize the babies in the water. Yeah, I know they're both yeah, anointed, yeah. but uh, now we've got all these babies covered in oil. We don't have enough Dawn soap. Uh, I think it is oil. Isn't isn't it like a baptismal oil that the, the Catholics use? Uh, uh I Eastern baptized. Orthodox does. I was baptized in oil. So yeah, my sister. Maybe it's not the Catholics then. I know some people do use oil for it, but yeah, exactly. I'm a, um, I'm a heretic. I'm not I'm you, not baptized. Me neither. Me neither. Unbaptized, Speaking. uncut, thriving in my own lane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm baptized. That's the only real difference. Um. Oh, now that everybody knows our I, situation, I would say I would say you're not thriving, Pete. But whatever. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. My birthday party. So how could you be thriving? Well, it's because I'm too weak to show off in front of Jamie now. Now I need. Now it's me. The right, ta- right. how the turn tables, right? <laughs> um. I was. It's funny. You were talking about like uh, anointed oils that need to be done. That is uh, like you had mentioned it off air. You were like, "Oh, Pete, you're going to like a lot of the art. It's very blasphemous." Mm-hmm. In Blasphemous Two, the one of the you have three weapons instead of just the one. One of them is a burning sensor, so it's like an incense sensor that you ignite the oil inside of it, and then you can burn enemies. Yeah. It does fire damage there, which is really cool. Yeah, I love I love the idea of like tanks, like flamethrower tanks with holy oil in them essentially that, that yeah. they just like laying on fire to burn these settlements. I did send well, you, I did send the boys two pictures during that description. Uh, there's a, a, the Herald of Beelzebub, the first one Beelzebub is, so this is where we kind of get the factions of hell. This is one of the factions of hell being the uh, cult of the black grail. The black grail is this plague, which Beelzebub himself will, will send out again. There's infighting among the devils. The cult of the black grail is one of the factions of hell. Uh, right. But likely when when the game gets more developed and they develop more models and stuff, too, there will be more factions added. Uh, so you got the Herald of Beelzebub, who's this like. But uh, <laughs> if if uh, Goldblum wasn't as attractive in the fly as Dr. Uh, I'm, I'm blanking on his name right now, oh, but uh, Dr. Brundle Brundle, that's it. Yeah. Uh, uh, chubby Dr. Brundle <laughs> turned into a, a horrific version of, of that. Chubby Dr. Brundle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, paging Chubby Dr. Brundle. <laughs> yeah. Chubby Dr. Brundle. Uh, and then there's the uh, Lord of Tumors. This one was pulled from Mike, from Mike Franchina's art station page. Uh, it's this like maybe 15 foot tall dude with these like long arms, which like hang down to his knees, just like covered in tumors. One of which is spewing forth a liquid that a uh, human sized human is catching in a in a little dish uh, and, and also is, there's another person who's clearly uh, drinking from that dish. their <laughs> cup has their cup it. has run it over with pus oh, yeah. and is just is consuming it out of like the large like it's like a, a big um like dish like plate sized bowl yeah it's like it's it. a collection it's a collection plate or a collection yeah, bowl, yeah, right? yeah. yeah i really like i i really do appreciate how you can see because this is new somebody was just like what if warhammer but the changes they made are good enough. It doesn't look derivative. It does, like, yeah, it, it doesn't feel like Warhammer. I think uh, like the uh, a lot of like the real world history that they use really does make it feel distinct. And th- there's not like more factions, but the like these are the for- these would be the forces of chaos in Warhammer. And yeah, there's yeah, yeah, there's definitely a lot of parallels there, right? Where yeah. it's it's hell energy, it's Hellraiser. It's like there's a lot of art which does. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I I think it's 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 all excellent. I love what I'm looking at. Is is the thing, and you know, you you know, I will criticize. Uh, I, I saved this one. I saved this third picture. I, my opinion, the best for last, where it has this like giant fleshy mosquito crawling over a guy's shoulder and like drinking his blood straight from his heart while he's grimacing yeah. in pain. Uh, so the corpse wars would begin with with this first Black Grail. Uh, the year is uh, 1346. Uh, the Grail would last for seven years until 1353, where this plague is spreading throughout the world, essentially. Um, the course wars begin. So humanity uh, and this new hell faction known as the cult of the black grail, as well as the resurrected corpses of those who fell against it uh, is being waged. 
this third picture that I sent to you is again from Mike Franchina's art station. And I have the quote describing it for you guys. This, this model, I guess, or this, this unit would be called an Exodus Excubitor. I didn't look up what that means. But the quote, the description is, only the strongest can survive the blessings of the Black Grail. The ones that do are inducted into the ranks of the Excubitors, bodyguards to the nobility of the Black Grail. This particular Excubitor is high ranking, as shown by his tapeworm adorn- adornments. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> those yep. uh those terrible like parasitic worms not not clinging to him but like running through him you'll notice uh like they're not latched onto the skin it looks like they're like piercing into it and coming out the other side uh are tapeworms and that's how you know those are his medals you pin a tapeworm <laughs> to a to a, a private for an act of heroism right <laughs> yeah if, if chubby doctor uh does well enough maybe we'll give him a zen pick <laughs> <laughs> well, a tapeworm a taper would help you lose weight too though yeah i think a tapeworm probably does less damage than ozempic because ozempic <laughs> like slows down your stomach to the point where food can rot in there where tapeworm will clean that right up yeah exactly you're just share it's sharing it's just a, yeah sharing. exactly um <laughs> yeah i i was gonna go on a tangent about ozempic but now i'm not gonna uh, it almost killed oprah okay it's crazy Talk to your doctors. Yeah, it was it was tested on a group of people for a specific disease, and now a bunch of people without that disease are taking it, and it never went through clinical trials for people that don't have that disease, basically. No, so. exactly. And the FDA was just like, you can't use it for weight loss, and then the company was like, what if we changed the name? And the FDA was just like, fine by me, and yeah. that's how you get that. Because <laughs> wow. Wagovi is just Ozempic, but mm-hmm. off-label use. Anyway. So the flirt, the flirt, the flirt Black Grail, uh, the first Black Grail plague would only be beaten, beaten back from mainland Europe in 1429, so about 70 years uh, after it first hit the world, uh, by none other than living saint Jeanne d'Arc. Uh, oh. Joan, of, Joan of Arc manages to drive the Black Grail Plague out of uh, Europe. That's her, that's her claim to fame in this one. I don't remember what she did in real life. but uh, Got visions and then was burned at the stake, I believe. Good for her. Mm-hmm. She's my favorite character I ever made in Dark Souls 3. It was a strength and faith build. Very good. Rec- <laughs> oh, recommend. I, Rec- recommend. <laughs> I found my uh, Dark Souls 3, uh, Bobby's Dark Souls 3. I thought that I gave it to someone to give it to someone to give it to someone. We got the PlayStation Fire. copy with the uh, the Bloodborne. I found so many games crushed under my couch along with my passport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jamie's showing up at the airport with a crushed, uh, crushed Dark Souls 3 case. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Dude, I found oh. them all. Like, like TSA is like, uh, this isn't a passport. Jamie in a panic flips his backpack over his Steam Deck, spills out, smashes on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> I love is, this I, instant transformation. It's just like a responsible 33 year old man after kissing a girl for two weeks. You're just like, <laughs> you, just like, how long have you been without a passport? Fuck. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's been a slow. It all started with streaming in February. I yeah, he, like. he got the girl <laughs> after the life change. Yeah, That's was, true. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it is a it, funnier story to say that he gets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I song. understand. I understand. Yeah. You started to feel less self conscious and motivated, and started to exercise and eat well. And that's uh, probably yeah. a big reason you found your passport. No, <laughs> dude. I just got some tapeworms in Ozempic, and now yeah. you know what? I'm fucking Easy. bitches and going places. Yeah. Dude. Hell yeah, but, dude! But don't, but don't worry about the Ozempic because I take it. But the tapeworms eat it all. So they yeah. can eat as much as they want, but I don't gain weight, and they don't gain weight. Yeah. You got like the tapeworms, the super like gaunt cheekbones in quotes. <laughs> they don't have bones. <laughs> um. So little fun fact with absolutely no bearing on the story yet. Maybe this will maybe this will come up later. Uh, Lord is, West can if you hear this, sir, you can put it in your tabletop game. No, no. So th- this is this is from the tabletop game. There's just nothing else. That, that that there's no other details about this so oh, okay. maybe maybe this event will have more details in, in the future but for now it doesn't in 1477 quote the city of argos is taken by god and it is no more and that's it <laughs> cool <laughs> this god said this city is gone it's, and it's like it's one of the good ones i guess i don't know why he took it nobody does i, I hope we find out someday part of me hopes we do find out from mr Pirinen. Part of me hopes that he just leaves it that forever, and nobody, nobody ever knows why God did that to that one Greek city. <laughs> in 1503, uh, humanity will get a small W. They discover the formula for orichalcum. Uh, you guys will recognize the name from Skyrim, probably. A, it was a lost metal uh, described in Plato's 
Critias as being less valuable than only gold and being heavily mined by the Atlanteans. So it's this like ancient metal. Okay, cool. Kind of like Damascus steel or uh, some other things like that, which are like lost from the time. It was described by a few different people, but nobody really knows what they were talking about. Okay. Um, so in 1503, it's in Trench Crusade, it said this was rediscovered and is actually a very valuable thing. Yeah. Mercury, we can't mine it anymore because all the fish ate it. Yeah, those um, bastards. That's why we tried to kill all the dolphins. That's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just mercury mining. Is it? <laughs> Overfishing is just mining for mercury. <laughs> you can use dynamite. I mean, it makes sense, right? <laughs> oh, <Yep>. God. <laughs> 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 like beer pong getting one stick of dynamite to a dolphin blowhole yeah <laughs> in world of warcraft they call it a dwarven fishing pole but it's just a stick of dynamite yeah. that's great <laughs> yeah. extremely costly to produce uh or calcum in trench crusade is essentially like mithril uh or you know insert fantasy metal here is it's 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 magic rock analogous so i can take a little sip of the you could you could take a say i i wanted to bring this up with you guys because it it is a magic rock it's a magic metal i think if we start including magic metals i think we're gonna i mean and the whole point was that it's in everything but this is really gonna be in everything now if we start including like mithril and all that in in our take a drink that is too far i'm I'm, i don't know if it's too far i'm with you that i think it i think it does deserve it i just we gotta be ready for that that alex will never be lifted again if we have to have everyone drink every time we talk about (laughs) magic metal on their forklifts right someone's gonna have to mail me like a a vintage case of four loco or something because i don't even know where to get them anymore (laughs) at this point so i can keep up with all these magic vintage four loco (laughs) yeah it's like 160 percent alcohol now (laughs) yeah (laughs) super strong relatively light or calcium is still used to this day Uh, it's why we get people wearing suits of plate armor when fighting against people with guns because it can withstand bullets essentially right cool so uh it's light enough to wear and it's strong enough durable enough to withstand uh actual bullets which is why plate armor fell out of fashion is because the invention of the musket would just punch a hole right in that bad boy and kill you anyway so you're just slower Mm -hmm. right in 1545, Antioch is utterly destroyed by an unknown infernal weapon. It would take 50 years for the walls of new Antioch to be completed. Okay. So this is kind of what I was referencing earlier. We don't know <clears throat> what happened to Antioch. We just know that it was completely destroyed by some weapon hell had at the time in 1545. Uh, I have a quote for you guys here. For 300 years, the principality of New Antioch has stood defiantly as the focal point of the church and the faithful at the very edge of the shadow cast by the gate of hell. It is the home of all our hopes, the bulwark against heretic forces, and the first line of defense against the devil's might. Should New Antioch fall, all the Levant will be lost. War has never left this corner of the world. The ancient city of Antioch was destroyed by a mysterious demonic weapon in the year 1545, but the faithful never gave up their positions in the ruins. Despite the lethal demonic essence emanating from the crater that was left behind, the garrison held on, even as mighty Constantinople fell to the legions of Kimaras, Marquis of Hell. Before it was destroyed, the ancient city of Antioch was always the first line of defense to be put to test. Thus, it is no wonder that in the year 1559, the Sword Congress of Vienna agreed to rebuild and fortify the city, and that a yearly tithe is to be sent to New Antioch by all the faithful nations, though this levy is rarely in the form of coin. Instead, endless supply trains of foodstuff, tools, ammunition, weaponry, machinery, and skilled workers and engineers come from across Europa and the Mediterranean Sea, as well as the African dominions. So this is our, uh, if we have the uh, Islamic fashion, the Great Sultanate, New Antioch, and the Principality of New Antioch is our, is our Christian Catholic fan, uh, faction. There's, okay, cool. it, it seems there still is like a Holy Roman em- Empire, and it seems like they're like... The Pope doesn't live here, I guess. It is too much on the front lines, right? Uh, it's said that some like heavy or uh, high-ranking members of the church will will uh, fight from New Antioch because it's you know they feel like they can make more of an impact and God's light is with them and all that stuff. But it's not like the head of the base of the church, but it is sort of for our military faction fighting against the forces of hell, their base of operations is New Antioch. And At this time, do we know uh, if there are uh, if there's a disagreement between popes because i remember because we had talked about dante's inferno and i remember from that one dante himself was one of the guelphs and there were black guelphs and white guelphs which were whether you believe christendom the capital is in the holy roman empire or whether it's at the vatican which is black and white respectively they would probably just fucking fight over this anyway but also like 
can you tint the windows of the Pope Mobile with Aralkium to keep him safe? Like, <laughs> like, you don't want him on the front lines regardless. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's unknown. Like, I, di- I didn't find anything that, that talks about that. I think based on how, you know, again, they fought a war over nails for 100 years in the midst of their war with hell. So I'm going to guess, yeah, they, these are still mortal people and there is still disagreements, even though there is the literal voice of God piping th- that they got piping through speakers, basically. Yeah, um, he, he took a city from us for no explainable reason. Like, yeah. <laughs> we don't know why he took Argos, right? No, no idea. Not, Probably not because yet, those right. other guys don't believe in the right number of nails. Yeah, oh, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Did anybody check what the, how many nails they believed in? <laughs> <laughs> These idiots thought my son was crucified with six nails. Uh, <laughs> They, um, I, I don't remember, I don't know if I get into, so one of the units, like one of the units that you can recruit to your, your war band in the game is like these, these people who their entire job is to just interpret the word of God. And they essentially just like slowly go insane doing it because it's impossible to, to hear it too much. So they have to just like full focus on just like hearing the word of God and they can see like the past present. They see like different timelines essentially to like know which actions to take but cool yeah just a cool little cool little thing yeah. uh so they got that and still the i bet the popes were fighting over stuff <laughs> they got people <laughs> who can literally hear the word of god and i bet you there's still people fighting over it in 1666 uh-oh the year of six woes we have one detailed woe that i can find oh <laughs> pers- and then you pers- have crash bandicoot's woe Whoa! 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 <laughs> uh, so uh, all I can find is one detailed woe. I don't know if this was six woes just like lumped into one, but uh, the forces of heresy overtake Gibraltar and get access to the Atlantic. So the straight. Yeah. So one of you guys, yeah, the rock of Gibraltar is, is controlled by hell. This becomes the base of operation for a new offensive against Europe. So I think Pete was saying at the beginning, like, is it entirely focused in the Levant? Around 1666 is when the forces of hell start to spread across the globe, essentially. Okay. They had been kind of confined to there for a long, long time. But um, suddenly England's involved. They build the Fortress of the White Cliffs, probably a parallel to Dover Castle. I got cool. a picture. Of, I got a picture of Dover Castle for you guys. This is just the uh, this is like an archetypal castle. It's just like classic vintage castle you know what i mean yeah got a got a big bridge they got a moat just a ca- good castle big thick walls great castle no no got a, uh, a princess cruise ship parked in the back just like in the bible <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. cliffs of dover by eric johnson dude that's some sick guitar right there <laughs> it's a, a, a wonderful song if you're a, a guitar player go watch that i think it was in guitar hero 3 i want to say oh, it was but, too yeah mm-hmm. The first modern submarines in Trench Crusade are invented in 1866 by the heretics, uh, aided by the demon Marbus. He's the, the one I, I referenced earlier in that book, that Keys of Solomon book. Um, this pretty quickly gives hell dominance uh, over the seas as the merchant navies are decimated. So we, we jumped ahead there. We jumped ahead 200 years to, from 1666 to 1866. Um, and they invent submarines. Hell invents submarines, right? I looked it up because I was curious. The actual first submarine was launched in, do you guys want to guess? I think it, it was ma- created by, like, the South in the Civil War. Didn't the, the, the rebels invent the submarine for the Civil War? Jamie, you want to take a guess? 1922. 1620 was the what? first. <laughs> so, I mean, the Wikipedia page on, like, the first submarine is insanely long. Because it's all, all like different versions. So this was a, a man powered one, right? There was no was engine. It Galileo in his mustard bath and he just went underwater and he's like, oh, yeah. we'll or, <laughs> I'm sorry, Eureka, Eureka. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, no, is this. Uh, that, that's is, what a big yellow submarine was about. Okay. It was yeah, Dutch a in, mustard bottle. It was a yeah. Dutch inventor and he invented it like a two person submarine, essentially, that was like hand powered. Like you, you could like hand pedal it, essentially. Right. Uh, but, it, but it worked. You could go underwater. Is it more um, embarrassing that 450 years later, five guys were killed in a submarine made with modern technology and the, the, <laughs> the Dutch did it? <laughs> I was thinking of the hand-powered submarine going to see the Titanic, too. Yeah, yeah the Dutch guy invented the Logitech wireless controller. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all, ac- all accounts, the first modern submarines were launched around this time in the 19th century. It's hard just to pick like who was the first one 
I, I didn't see anything about the Civil War. I saw a lot about like in Europe, like the French had like a candidate for the first submarine, which was steam powered. Then I believe the French invented the first is the French or the Norwegians invented the first steam powered one, which is the trick to it was how to get the coal to burn without eating up all your oxygen. So they had to come up with the system to feed the coal oxygen without consuming the oxygen <laughs> that the divers yeah, would course. need, essentially. Oh. Um, so it's really I hard heard that like the North during the civil war in the U S had like iron sided ships that were vulnerable yeah. from underneath. We all, I, we all saw yeah. Sahara wild, with wild Matthew West. McConaughey and yeah. also wild, <laughs> yeah. wild West, but also Sahara with Matthew McConaughey and Steve Zane. I have not seen. Yeah. But I one thought of, this the, was one like, of those ships washes up in the middle of the Sahara and that's the big mystery that they got. Okay. They gotta yeah. figure. Cause I thought that was like one of the like, like real world trivia that they were like, well, if sub, why not, you know, spider. <laughs> it was around that time. The the Civil War was 1867, right? So it was it yeah, was around yeah. that time where these were being experimented with. So I could see why that would be a thing. I don't. I think I knew on an intellectual level that they had submarines in World War One. I. I never really thought about it. I guess like it just feels weird that they had submarines and like part as part of the Navy there were submarines going around sinking each other. Yeah, I remember thinking when I was reading War of the Worlds, the fact that they had iron ships fighting the tripods. I remember when I was reading that in high school, I was like, what? Metal ships in the 1890s? Are you fucking kidding me? As as if metal was invented in like right. 1920, right? Like, yeah. What the fuck am I talking about? Yeah. <laughs> the uh, So the year 1894, about 30 years later, would come to be known as the year of the Broken Trinity. To find out why, first let's talk about a particular training regimen for the forces of hell. Some of those born in the heretic camps, so humans born in the heretic camps, are selected at a young age to leave the mortal realm and are sent through the gates of hell to be raised as death commandos. Very cool. These will become some of the most elite forces of hell. Uh, you got those, uh, you, you got the who's who of dead killers. You know, you got Jack the Ripper, the rest, uh, in the seventh circle of hell to teach him, right? Because the seventh circle is where, where murderers are, are punished. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> It's just funny. It's like, you know, a who's who, a veritable who's who, famous killers. Jack the Ripper. Others. <laughs> oh, name another serial killer from before from before the 19th century. I can't. I'm just saying it's just a, it was just a funny thing to say. Yeah, I'm just I, laughing um, at you. <laughs> I, I was laughing at myself whenever I was writing it because I was like, oh. I'm, Alexander I'm, the Great. Uh, Genghis Khan. Uh, I almost said Genghis Khan. I was like, eh, is he a murderer? He's not a murderer, though, right? He's a conqueror. A conqueror. Jinx. The, chur- the yeah. church, the church sends that guy to heaven, right? That's a He's that's pagan. a good guy. Well, yeah. Sorry, I'm not saying like him, specific, but I'm saying like people like that would would yeah. end up there. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard. Maybe Jack the Ripper was just conquering his own thing, you know? True. Con- con- I conquered all the wenches in London. <laughs> 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 uh, you got so you got all these killers to teach you uh, in the seventh circle to teach you how to be good murderer. Uh, you got the river sticks to dip your blades into for that extra dash of poison. Hell uh, yeah. so, so these these turn out to be some pretty good uh, assassins in their own right. Here's a short quote for you guys. Aside from their weapons, the death commandos are equipped with stealth generators that operate by diffracting light, utilizing the heart of an innocent and infernal technologies that hide them from the eyes of God. I just I, cool. I love in this I love in this fiction that you need stealth technology to not just hide you from man, but to hide you from the very eyes of God. Right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean. A, They've got like radar deflecting armor on spy planes and they have God on their side, dude. Like you do need a little bit more, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Can I borrow that? I just want to jork it crazy style real quick and I cannot <laughs> let God see this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's so- why Argos was destroyed without reason was too many people jorking it crazy style. <laughs> <laughs> Lore boys cannon. <laughs> it's like pop, pop, we. I, anytime somebody says jerk your crazy style, I think of cra- how crazy, how would crazy frog do it? You know what I mean? Oh yeah. From the that's, back. That's crazy style to me. That's anyway. wild. <laughs> Too far, Jamie. <laughs> so we've got the, the greatest, the greatest murderers. You've got Jack the Ripper, crazy frog. The rest. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jamie, you would ask them for their stealth technology. They would not answer you. These are silent specters of death, as at the end of their training, their tongues are ceremoniously ripped out so that they may never speak of what they have learned. So they could never share the secrets of Jork in a crazy style. No. Uh, in the year 1894, as well. again, uh, giving them the ability to hide from the eyes of God is going to be important because we are talking in 1894, the year of the broken triad. We have three of these silent assassins who would emerge. Those three are named Cain, Barabbas, and Haman. 
Kane, obviously fairly well known for inventing murder. Oh, yep. he, he was probably in hell. There you go. You got the OG oh, in the seventh circle true. of hell. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Barabbas, you may or may not know. I thought Pete might jump in here. Was the prisoner chosen by the crowd to be released by Pontius Pilate over Jesus Christ in the customary pardon before the feast of Passover? Did not know that. Pilates back then? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, dude, they invented it. (laughs) Jesus invented it. What do you think he was doing on that cross? (laughs) (laughs) It was a mobility exercise. Yeah, he's just stretching. Yeah, he's just stretching. Yeah, yeah. They surprised him with four nails. Exactly four nails. <laughs> yeah. If he's that flexible, you you wouldn't have his feet that close together, right? It would be four nails. I yeah. think if Pilates existed back then, it, I'm I'm fuck those triclavians, man. Idiots. I'm a quad dumbasses. Fuck it. <laughs> morons. God damn. Yeah. yeah. Uh Hamas. So I love that it's like, okay, so we've got Cain, definitely bad guy, was known for uh inventing murder, right? Yes. I don't know. I don't know the Bible story. Obviously, All he kills project- his brother. He's the son no, of sorry, Adam and of, Eve of, of Barabbas of Barabbas. No, I don't yeah, know, I, I've never heard I of don't him. Know, I don't know the Bible story of Barabbas. All I know is that, like he's just a guy who's like was going to be crucified, got lucky, and the crowd's like, "No, release Barabbas. He's all right." You know, he's like, "Oh, thanks, guys. That's real great." And he's in the company of Cain and Haman, who, not to be outdone by Barabbas, tried to have all the Jews in the Persian Empire killed when a man named Mordecai once snubbed him. <laughs> Holy like, fuck. You, have, you have monster just normal guy who got lucky as far as i know maybe the maybe the bible story tells it differently and he like schemed and manipulated his way into getting jesus killed but really seems like it's just monster normal guy monster right? yeah. <laughs> wow so what are you in for it's like oh you know i stole a loaf of bread from a rich and i got caught you know this is, yeah <laughs> but i got lucky i got i got i got, I got let out early it's fine and uh what'd you do it's like i killed my brother who was one of four people alive on earth at the time it's like <laughs> okay cool that's crazy and what did you do it's like well let me get well, to <laughs> uh it smells good my friend yeah mordecai uh, this motherfucker let this me mo- tell you motherfucker that. mordecai he didn't bow I, I said everybody bow when i walked through the streets and he didn't so <laughs> you know what i mean i don't think i went too far uh <laughs> These three death commandos, in a masterful display, simultaneously assassinate the Supreme Pontiff, the High Prophetess Aelia, and the Holy Roman Emperor. This throws the defending forces of the faithful into disarray with no leadership, and the forces of hell launch twin offenses across the Levant and Europe. So a lot of ground gets gained uh, at the end of the 19th century by the forces of hell. Uh, Again, this is 1894, so right at the end of the century, uh, 20 years before modern modern day in the fiction right the, right yeah the start of world war one um perhaps we got some signs of desperation here again just two like footnotes with no other context in 1899 the church space program is started cool. <laughs> so the catholic church is like <laughs> we gotta go <laughs> uh, it's not going well we gotta go uh, and in 1907 the construction of the moving fortress of britannia is completed again no context on that but i just love the picture of like the royals being like well if the demons show up we're gonna have to move to peasant lands and crush their little houses <laughs> with their howls moving castle right <laughs> i picture the christian rocket to be in the shape of a cross of course right nash, and like nash. I- going up like the the arms of the cross fall off the bottom of the cross falls off and eventually it's just a smaller cross but i do i do love the idea of like that being it and that's why it never works because like every aerospace engineer is like no you you have to understand we just we can't make it across it's got to be like a fuselage like it's got to be aerodynamic you know what yeah, i mean I was gonna say, it needs it needs to be rounded in a it. few places I think just like a guy a, a guy in a a guy in a white robe with a big silly hat just pointing at the sign which says church space program right it's just like uh, tapping yeah. church like, you know be really funny if this pro- program uh, this is a dump on the uh, is it never got off the ground because they were arguing constantly on whether the rocket launch system would have three stages or four stages and there's just like <laughs> nails that would just like stage one detachment complete and like two nails (laughs) like detach out of the jesus that's onto it and then you've got like that rear view rocket camera of like the jesus like falling off into orbit like back (laughs) or the church needs galileo's help because he knows that we they killed him they killed him for inventing mustard (laughs) yeah for getting mustard on the on the pope's white shirt (laughs) uh in 1910 we have the battle of cordoba uh it's 
only really relevant because it's the most recent major conflict on our timeline as the forces of hell bombard the ancient city but are unable to gain access to the capital of hispania oh i was gonna say where is cordova i guess it's in the iberian peninsula cordoba yeah i believe so i didn't specifically okay. look it up but i made the same assumption as you it's hispania so it's it's the spain parallel yeah <laughs> also known as spain uh then we have 1914 year of our lord present day in the setting here's a quote for you guys and i'll send you three pictures which are just just vibes for what we're dealing with here 1914 the present day both sides are preparing for major offensive operations. In the huge swaths of no man's land, furious skirmishes and raids increase in intensity as the faithful and heretics vie for information, powerful relics, and securing strategically important positions. So you kind of see that's the the setup for your because you, it is like a, a tabletop war game, but you do do campaigns. So you like you, you start have toys, with toys, or is it like D and D with paper? No, it's so it's toys. It's a war game. It's more like Warhammer 40k where cool. you set up. Okay you set up your armies and your armies will battle against uh, other armies. It's not like a, you don't have one character. It's not really role playing. I could see you adding role play elements to it. Cause it does have campaign mechanics where essentially like you have your war band. It's like a small group or of whatever. And you venture into no man's land is usually where it like takes place. And you'll, you're looking for like these powerful relics. You're looking for whatever you have, like missions that you have to go on. Then you can, you'll gain money and you can gain something called glory points. And that will let you for the next fight, build up your army bigger essentially you know like glory points let you buy like these big heroes and like these very powerful units and then just cash will let you just like re, re uh what is the reinforce reinforce your army or like buy new like uh infantry men essentially yeah cool i've never had an interest in playing 40k but i do love watching 40k in 40 minutes the youtube channel mm -hmm. where they just condense it down uh, an entire match and i know like they agree on a point value and different units have a point value yeah exactly yeah that's yeah just it's, to it's similar it, right yeah exactly that's that's how armies in 40k work is like you you do a 2000 point army versus a 2000 point army or a 500 point army is a 500 point army and it's just exactly that so it's balanced it's like what yeah. games workshop does is balance these units essentially so i did send you guys three pictures which i just think are like great setting pieces right you just have this uh this massive fortification in front of these uh these lines of trenches so like you have bunkers with uh the church steeples on top of them like pillboxes with the church steeples on top of them and then you have uh Oh, sorry. I didn't send you guys these pictures. I, I was going to say, I have not received I, them. I sent these pictures to my wife who DM'd me uh, the correct way to pronounce <laughs> Pontius Pilate. <laughs> That's, I wasn't going to correct you because I thought there was like a different Latin way of saying it. I didn't want to cut you off. <laughs> I, I assume there there is a different Latin way of pronouncing Pontius it. Pontius Pilates. I, I, right. mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I love how she's like, this is how you say Pontius Pilate. And you just sent her this black and white picture of a tombstone ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight up. And like big tanks in front of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the second picture in, in the batch I sent to you guys now is like you just have these fortifications, you have these pillboxes yeah. with these steeples on top, and then you have tanks like three hundred feet tall, essentially, right? Just yeah, like, like the size of in mountains. the background. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you got the tombstone ghost. So these are the forces of hell, like on a procession. You have like a man at the front with a an, uh, like a battle axe, probably twelve feet tall, and his head is just a column of fire. And then behind him, there is a hundred foot tall thing with a scythe right like the the grim reaper essentially it's it looks like the grim reaper but i don't it the cloak it's wearing kind of looks like it's made of smoke and uh, its entire body is very clearly just flesh also yeah. i think it has three legs speaking of jerking it crazy style there's like a leg oh, just yeah, in the middle like, coming out of the front it might have more yeah it might be like four-legged or something too yeah they're all nasty. they're all freaks they're all freaks in hell huh. so. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, this is uh, we were talking about uh, Hispaniola and the Iberian Peninsula. We do have uh, the kind of cone hooded uh, f like procession of flagellants, the very specific Spanish form of Catholicism, the cone, the conical hood that yeah. is that Blasphemous's cone helmet is based off of and that, of course, the KKK would eventually steal. The, but the that's capi the capi roads. Uh, yes, we'll, that's it. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about them as well. Yeah. So, I mean. The aesthetic is World War One, but somehow it's Capriate, shittier. not to correct your pronunciation oh, sorry, sorry, right sorry. away. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds like a Spanish pronunciation. I'm doing the English pronunciation. Of course. Uh, the aesthetic Capriot. is just World <laughs> Capriot. That's what I think it is. G Gabagool. Uh, Gabagool. The aesthetic is World War One, just shittier, right? Shittier somehow, and just more demons and monsters and stuff. Uh, I mentioned earlier the discovery of orichalcum, a steel alloy imbued with divine light is how it's made. Uh, more malleable, yet harder than any normal steel. They are able to withstand a hail of gunfire 
and is used to this day to protect from firearms and explosives. Thus, a lot of the forces you'll see fighting against hell are decked out in heavy metal armor, though most of the forces of Christianity also have a ton of Catholic imagery, right? Naturally, so I'll send you guys a few more pictures here. Give me a moment. So the tombstone ghost thing is obvious, is not a the, one of the fourth forces of God. No, that's that's the forces of hell. That's yeah, okay. the the guy with the big axe and the horrible oh, yeah. monster this that they're dragging the in chains. Armored Capriate right here. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Capriot. Uh the uh, the, yeah. the iron iron capybara. So holy iconography <laughs> is everywhere on the battlefield. The only difference with real life being that they actually do something in Trench Crusade. Uh, many of the pilgrims wear uh, iron capirote, <laughs> capirotes, those tall conical hats you see uh, Catholics on parade wearing sometimes uh, to shield their minds from the horrors of hell. So specifically those helmets, that's what that's what they do. They shield it's their minds. stealth bomber oh. armor. With this, be yeah, exactly. Call back to that. It's that, very that's, dynamic. All the space program for uh, the Catholics, they all have pointy hats uh, because yeah. they're getting shot up into space. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when all like else... a, a fabric hood on the rocket, just like to launch yeah. over the space. <laughs> hey, when all else fails, I'll be the bullet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, that is specifically like a witch hunter. We have a picture of just like a uh, like a heavy infantry guy in this. Uh, I know neither of you guys have watched Full Metal Alchemist, uh, but it's essentially uh, the main characters from Full Metal Alchemist, where this is like small guy, and then this just massive suit of armor behind him holding a minigun. Uh, and then the third picture, this is uh, another one from Mike Franchina's art station. Uh, this is a martyr. Uh, and here's a, a brief description from him. This martyr, after suffering grievous injuries, has been resurrected by a meta Christ. Driven insane by the constant pain and existential horror, it has descended into religious madness. It believes it must continue mortifying its own flesh as penance for its sins. Um, it's a pretty gruesome thing. It's kind of got like the cross on its back uh, and then it's just missing. 50% of its torso. Essentially. It looks like it got shot in the chest with a cannonball and it just went right through. But it's but it does that to itself. That's it just did all that to itself because that's, that's that's what they do. It's yeah. like biting your nails. I also like that it was resurrected by a meta Christ. Like Zuck is getting out of control with all these, yeah. these spin-offs, <laughs> man. <laughs> uh the heretic <laughs> legions, not to be outdone, have some fucked up me- uh hell metal straight from the crucibles in Tartarus. Much stronger than traditional steel, hell steel comes with the caveat that just wielding a weapon of it or donning a suit of infernal armor will leave behind festering runes, wounds which will never heal on both body and soul. So here's here's some pictures from uh, Mike Franchina on uh, the forces of hell. This decapitated hell priest with the Windows 98 screensaver arteries coming out of his neck are crazy. <laughs> yeah, so th- that is a uh, an unholy chorister. So they essentially will will rip off their head, carve a pentagram into it, uh, and then walk around holding their their own head in their hand, which will uh, recite a demonic incantations essentially on the battlefield. And like Pete says, it's kind of like uh, the thing special effects with like the the blood vines essentially, but coming straight yes. out of its neck. It, at like at right angles and doing the like Pete said the the Windows ninety seven or ninety eight screensaver pipes or something like that or or pipes yeah. they're called yeah. pipes yeah pipes. yeah yes. <laughs> Ke- capi pipes <laughs> uh, th- next to that we have like horrible dog faces these are like servants of the mother of beasts which is like another uh, hot greater demon it seems like uh, which is like, you just posted a picture of yourself yeah. Nah, I'm I'm uh, I'm the mother of beast favoritist boy. <laughs> they do have horrible dog faces, and they have teeth all over the place. Like I thought, they're... they had canteens because of the World War One setting. They're actually just engorged ticks the size of watermelons, which is yeah. so much oh, worse. Just not good. I, I didn't notice that actually, but thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tick check. Oh, we got dude. We we've talked about this out in the country. You always tick check the boys. You gotta tick check the boys. Uh, you gotta tick check your boys. Tick, tick, so tick, these, tick. <laughs> the, the metallurgic miracles not, uh, give not only your average Joe leg up, it also lets machinists really strut their stuff. The foundries in New Antioch are regularly pumping out artillery pieces exceeding 300 feet in length. Think those big tanks we saw in the background. While the forges of hell have produced up to their largest, cutely named the Mouth of Hell, uh, which reaches an equally cute 666 feet long. And of course, it has a caliber of 100 or 1,666. Uh, it's these cannons raining hellfire down on no man's land while the foot soldiers do their best to gain an inch here or there. Thanks to the improvements of modern armor, close quarters combat is even more prevalent when storming an enemy's trenches. 
Some enemies, such as the Heretic Anointed, are so heavily armored that it takes a barrage of concentrated fire just to knock them down, and they need to be finished off with specialty daggers capable of finding that one gap in their armor. So I think it was Jamie that said at the beginning, like, imagine these, like, huge things coming at you. Like, there's some with just, like, their armor is so strong it cannot be pierced, and they just have to, like, like weigh them down essentially enough, like bowl them over with a big enough barrage, weigh them down long enough for like one guy to just get in there with a knife and find that little gap in the armor to to finish uh, them off. Like opening up an oyster. They've got just like the shucking thing, the 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 flat yeah. the, the flat <laughs> exactly. file with a big round handle. <laughs> yeah. Shuck, shucking some hell oysters. Uh, <laughs> so here's here's a quote to to kind of bring us home. Those brave or suicidal enough to wield anti-tank hammers, pole arms with explosives powerful enough to tear apart even the strongest of armor. Still, the humble bolt-action rifle is the workhorse of the battlefield, and most yeoman soldier- soldiery as well as heretic legionnaires carry it. Many other weapons, though rare, are in common use. Machine guns, sniper rifles, grenades of both shrapnel and gas variety, as well as experimental anti-material materiel rifles, while the heretic forces are equipped with blades of eternally burning fire, living bullets that infect their targets and turn them into undead metastatic vessels forever bound in servitude to the devils and heavy flamethrowers forged in the iron pits of dis belching the flames of the lake of fire where damned souls wither for all eternity and that's where we'll leave you a pretty cool piece of uh grimdark with some great great art uh I'm not normally a gory boy but uh, i think mike franchino really did a, a phenomenal job with these pieces it's so fucking cool yeah uh, check out his art station. He has uh, he, he sells for like seven bucks, like an hour long video of him designing one of these. And like he goes through like his entire process, thought process on it, talks about his decisions, talks about a little bit about philosophy. And it, it seems I, I haven't watched it personally. The reviews for it are all uh, glowing. Um, so check it out. Mike Franchina on art station. Thanks so much for listening. If you guys like the show, the best way to support it is by leaving us a rating or review and telling the people that you know about it. Uh, it's how, it's how we grow the show. Uh, so we appreciate it so, so, so much. Uh, Pete, is there anything you want to talk about, uh, in Instagram world perhaps? Uh, yeah. At low Wars podcast on Instagram, come say hello. Uh, if you want to click the link down, uh, below this episode, uh, patreon.com slash the lore boys there is a sizable preview of the comic that i was working on for quite some time uh, i've taken the summer off but if you want a preview three bucks a month gets you a preview as well as fucking 215 hours of bonus audio at this point we've done so many extra episodes all there for as little as three american dollars a month um but yeah that's me jamie twitch.tv slash loreboy james we were playing some borderlands 3 this tuesday we played about uh, for like three and a half hours um new schedule coming soon uh probably tuesdays are going to be involved but I'll, I'll hit you guys when i have the real one uh nailed down um if you want to talk more discord.tg slash loreboys uh thank you so much to everyone who's in there we see our lj's we see our saucies <clears throat> our honest dons our avocados or magnus scientists or more like scientists Little uh, we got big ass. Uh, yeah, little uh, big honey ass, boy, uh, fragile shark. Yeah, we got all, all all those folks in there. Jack the uh, Ripper and uh, the rest. Yeah, <laughs> and the rest. Uh, Jack so the if you Ripper want to be and the rest, crazy. If problem. you want to be a part of the community and <laughs> actually have an impact on the episodes you hear, uh, Discord is the best place to do that because that's where a lot of our eyes are. So get into that Discord.gg slash lore boys. Yeah. Like Pete said, check out our Patreon. If you don't trust Patreon, of course, we do have Lord Boys Prime, a service which we've always offered this week. Obviously, we're sending you to the Holy Land. Uh, for anyone who is already signed up, uh, please head to uh, Lore, Ohio. Uh, make your pilgrimage and uh, get ready for something big. My best advice would be start digging holes, uh, not trenches. Don't don't make that. We're not making that mistake again. <laughs> holes like in, in the movie Holes with Shia LaBeouf. So dig a bunch of holes yeah. outside of the city of Lore, Ohio. Uh, I mean, phase one of the plan is to really spook out the residents. You know what I mean? We got to we got to get them spooked. Got to get them getting ready to leave because they're like, who the fuck's digging holes all over all over our countryside? <laughs> you cannot be seen digging these holes. They seem they, they it needs to seem like the place has been cursed. Yeah, exactly. I feel, I feel like just a bunch of little holes all over. That would be so great for uh, those big lumbering demons in orc uh, metal armor, right? They would just yeah. like trip on them and fall down. Constantly so you go over there and, and shuck their, their guts or whatever. So sprained, <laughs> ankle, sprained ankles and shucked guts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think that would cost you a lore boys. Lore boys. Lore boys. Out.